So it's time for our final line. Michael, why don't you begin? All right, wine number three is a clean, uh, slightly hazy uh, wine of medium plus concentration. It's a, uh, of a, a dark garden. It's moving to a rim that's got uh, a little bit browning, kind of a pinky, uh, orange, salmon skin rim, a uh, very thin water line. And there might be a little bit of particulate in this wine, um, just a little bit of sediment and the viscosity put at uh, medium plus. Seth? Okay. For nose, definitely sound. Uh, I'm gonna say medium to medium plus concentration. Uh, somewhere between fairly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually shoot more for developing. Uh, it's, this is not something that's jumping out as a very you know, new wine. Uh, now fruit wise, first thing that's jumping out of me are figs. And usually, you know, I'm thinking is, you know, for fruits. I mean, that's something that it seems very distinct. Uh, almost, I'm thinking of uh, almost little bits, it's that kind of sweetness. I'm thinking of uh, the honey. Looks like if you ever had like a really sweet apple with honey. Uh, so that's, it. but again, it's really a lot of fig. Not really picking up on minerality through the nose. Uh, yeah. You seem pleased. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Noon, why don't you finish up with the palate? This is sound of sound condition, dry. Um, the body is medium to medium plus. Um, for fruits, I get a lot of black, friendly fruits, um, kind of uh, a, a figs as well, a little of black raspberries thing going on. Um, there is definitely some red potting soil, some earth, some minerality in there. Um, acidity is, I would say, kind of a medium acidity, but I also think it complements the minerality really well. Um, Non-fruit flavor, I do get that root beer, sassafras thing going on. Um, it assess the ten. Um, there is the tannin, I would say, is medium plus, but it's well integrated. Uh, some spice in there, um, I would say, kind of a cinnamon, smoked cinnamon. Um, it's, it's a balanced wine, um, pretty lengthy finish um, of uh, moderate plus complexity. So we were, we're talking about a wine that is um, very flavorful, obviously. Um, one of the things I picked up on was a lot of dried fruit characteristics because when I think of figs, I think of something that's sort of dehydrated a little bit. Um, Color-wise, um, you know, that salmon orangey color developing leads me away from the new world, right? Because it's not that fruit forwardness. Yeah, absolutely. So what region comes to mind? Italy. I, Italy, yes. Italy, Asian, right. Tuscany. Uh, Italy, France. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I want to go braise something and, and have it with this. A true chef. <laughs> okay, uh, so climate wise? Moderate, 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 moderate climate. climate. Fruits, fruits right, um, but there's still this tart edge to it. Um, there's good acidity on this wine. Um, I think there's actually quite a bit of acidity for a red grape. Um, you know, it puts me kind of in the uh, in central Italy. It's not up in the north where it's kind of really cool, down in the south where it's super hot. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of right in the middle. Okay. So Seth, what do you think about the potential varietals? You know, something I'll say like a Sangiovese. New? Um, I like Sangiovese a lot. I'm thinking some kind of Brunello. And finally, a vintage. Maybe all five dollars. Seth, I'm vintage? Saying, I was thinking somewhere between youthful and developing. So 06, 07. Michael, vintage? Um, I'm going to go with uh, 2007. Cool vintage. Um, not hugely ripe, but uh, still developing. OK. So we're all in Italy. And one of our choices is a 2007 Amarone. Another choice is a 2005 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. And our final choice is a 2000 and eight Malbec, Argentina. Amarone. Big Amarone. Big Amarone. That's why Big Amarone equals Big Braze. And the answer is 2007 Amarone. That's 
some of the lightest amaronias I've ever had. Agreed. Agreed. Um, it's, this is a, it's, it's, an, it's an amarone that doesn't pack as much punch as I, I normally associate. Normally, amarone, you have a glass and you're on the couch taking a nap afterwards. Um, it's a small amarone. Yeah, it's and uh, also, a tea amarone. Yeah, the tannin in this is it, it's, it's so really, unlike yeah. 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 typical amarone. One of the things we often find is that wines aren't always varietally correct. Winemakers can influence wines in terms of their final style, and I think this was a very good example. So guys, general thoughts on Italy as a wine region. What's your favorite regions, and where do you go, and why? Uh, but my, one of my favorite regions actually is um, uh, Valtellina up in Lombardy. Uh, focus on the Nebbiolo grape, which I think is one of the most noble of Italian grape varietals. Makes some amazing wines. Um, but Valtellina offers value that you, can, you can't really find um, for Nebbiolo anywhere else. Um, Nebbiolo producing great Barolos, Barbarescos. Um, you don't usually see it outside of Piemonte, but this little region up in, up in the mountains in northern Italy just provides amazing wine. Um, and there's so much Italian wine to drink, it's, it's, it's hard to find a favorite, but that's uh, always a region that I enjoy drinking. Noon, where do you go in Italy? Uh, Italian reds are great, they're all classics, but I love Valentina. So Campania is definitely where I would go in Italy. There have been poems written about Valentina and it's just simply delicious. That's not an, an area that people normally associate in Italy. Why is that special to you? It's a, a fun region. It's an up and coming region in uh, the southern Italy. It, uh, has, uh, it showcases fruits, it showcases flowers, it just put a touch of sunshine in your glass.